Welcome to the module 2 of the Power Query series. In this module, we'll deep dive into the essential transformation tool that made Power Query so powerful. You'll learn how to clean, reshape and organize your data all without writing a single line of code. And in case you have not watched the module 1 of this Power Query series, then I highly suggest that you go ahead and watch that first. The link will be in the description so that you can just go to that video and come back once you're done with it. All right, so now let's get started. Okay, so now let's start from the very beginning. Because we are talking about transformation, obviously we would first import our data in. Now in our previous model, we were using a CSV file to import the data. And as I indicated earlier, we will try to cover a couple of other data sources as well. So now in this module, we're going to import our data from our SQL Server database. Okay. So again, I'm going to go to get data and click on SQL Server or the SQL Server shortcut option is also available at the top here. So I can click this. In the prompt, it will ask you for the server name. Now, if you don't know what the server name is, when you open up your local instance of your SQL Server, it will show you the server name here at the top. And in case you want to copy it, you can just right click, go to properties. And from this, you can just copy this. One thing to note here is this is my local SQL Server instance. So your instance name would be different from mine. So don't get confused and don't try to copy this name because this will not work for you. Now I'm going to go back in the server. I'm going to enter this server name. I'm going to keep this at import mode only. There is an option to provide the database name as well, but I'm going to keep it as blank and I'm going to select that from the next prompt window. So I'm going to click on OK here. It will show you a new pop-up window. Within this, it will show you the database name. So BI is my database name. And if I open this up, it will show me a couple of the data that we're using for now is this crime data. Again, the link will be in the description. You can download the data from there. I'm going to check mark this crime data and I'm going to click on this transform data now. This will open up the Power Query window. So let me give you a quick highlight about this data. This is a crime data from a particular city within United States. It has a couple of information like when the crime happened, that is the date, the time, the area, and the type of crime which happened. It also contains a couple of information about victims, gender, victims, descent, and victims age as well. We're going to apply some basic and advanced transformation steps on this data to create something useful. Now, the first transformation step that I apply while importing any data is to check the data type. This, I have already shown it in my previous module, but I'm going to show it again. So if you see at the top left, you have these small buttons. If you click on them, you will see a couple of other options, which are all other data types which are available within Power Query. You can just select any one of them and it will change the data type of that particular column. Now, let's see if any of these column has a wrong data type information. Now, if you see in this column, CRM underscore CD, which is nothing but a crime directory, the values are all numbers. However, the data type stored in this is ABC, which is a text value. And this sometimes happens because the column might contain few alphanumeric values or the column might contain null values. So that's why it is showing like this. But I want to convert this to a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on ABC and click on whole number and this will get converted into a number. Similarly, I'm going to check other columns and if I find anything else which I want to change, I'm going to change that. Like for example, I have a few of these columns which has the same information but is stored as a text. So I'm going to change these as well. So our basic data type transformation is done. Okay, so now the next type of transformation we're going to see is renaming your tables and columns. Now, when you import any data set within Power Query, the query section here at the left shows you the table which we are importing. Now, this also gives you the option to rename your table. Okay, if you right click and click on rename, you can change the name to something else. Let's say raw data. Now, if you notice, when I change the name of this query raw data, 
the name at the right hand side property has also changed to raw data okay so basically you can change the name from here or you can also change your name from here so if i change it from here this will also change here okay so i'm going to change it back to raw data itself or else let's keep it as crime data the next one is renaming your columns now again because you're renaming columns you can choose your column right click and this will give you an option to rename so you can rename like this or else you can also double click on the column header and it will open up the editing feature within that column header and you can rename from there now if you go to the transform tab within the power query window you will also see the same option in this tab as well if you see there's a rename here and if you read the tooltip here it says change the name of the currently selected column so if i click on any one of them click on rename i can change it to anything i want now if you notice one thing the moment i changed anything in this preview window the steps got applied onto the applied step so if you see at the right hand side just below the change type there's a new step added which is called renamed columns and if you select this step there's a formula bar just above this preview pane which is this it will show you what you have done so in this it says that date underscore rptd is renamed to date underscore reported there is another way to see what you have done in terms of steps apart from this applied steps is to go to home and then click on advanced editor here this will show you all the steps that you have applied on a particular table so this will show you right from the beginning where you have fetched the data from which database and then which table and finally all the steps that you have applied on that particular table so as i said before everything that you do in power query is recorded and at any point in time you can go back reverse what you have done so if i just click on this cut icon here the step that i applied for renaming the column will be nullified so if i click on this cross here if you see now the table header the column header has been reverted back to the original state like it was before okay moving on the next transformation that we can do is removing a column so let's say you have this huge data set here and you don't want all the columns to be present here because you see the number of columns and number of rows that you keep within your power query table that will decide how much load that you put on power bi while you refresh your data set so in case you feel all these columns are not required for your analysis you can always remove them so let's say i decide that i don't want this cross street column here so what you can do is select the column right click and then click on remove you can do this for multiple columns so let's say i'm going to choose cross street and i'm going to choose this date occ and in order to select multiple columns you simply press control and then select all the columns now once you've selected multiple columns or single column just right click and click on remove column and as you see the step has also been added on the right hand side the column has been removed but in case you think that there was a mistake you can just go ahead and cancel this out and the column will come back now instead of removing columns there is also an option to keep columns which means let's say you have 100 columns and you want to remove let's say 95 of the columns and you want to keep only 5 so obviously you would not select 95 column one at a time it's better to select those five columns and remove the other ones right so this is how you do it let's say you want date reported you want area you want area name crime description victim age sex descent and status description okay once you've selected everything just right click and click on remove other columns this means whatever you have selected apart from those columns everything else will be removed so in a sense you're keeping only those columns which you have selected now i'm going to remove these steps the remove other columns and the remove columns one because we might need it for future transformation steps that we're going to learn so i'm going to remove those steps now we have seen how to remove columns but how will you remove rows removing rows simply means you're filtering out certain row items so how do you do that it's 
as simple as like you do it in Excel. Just click on this drop down button here and select whatever items you want. So in case I only want data for let's say 2020. So I'm going to do is date filter and between select this calendar. So 1st January 2020 here and before or equal to 31st December 2020. And if I press OK, all the remaining rows will get filtered out. Now I showed you how you can filter a row based on the date selection here. But if it's a text column or a number column, the options are a bit different. So if you select a number column here, you will have a number filter and you can choose equal to greater than less than all those things. And if it's a text, then it will give you a text filter and it will contain equal does not equal begins with ends with contains etc. Okay. So again, based on the data type of the column, you'll receive these options. You can choose any option you want. Okay. So now the next transformation is sorting your rows. So it is possible for you to sort any of these row items based on any of these column headers. So let's say for example, I want to sort it by date reported. So you just click on this column here and sort from the top here to ascending or descending and it will sort everything accordingly. And remember, you can apply a sorting on multiple columns. So, so you have applied a sorting on this date reported and let's say now you want to sort it by victim age. So I'm going to click on this and sort ascending. So what this will do is it will sort the data based on those two columns. And you can see that in this formula bar here, it has applied both the sorting in one single step. All right, moving on. The next transformation is splitting a column. In this crime description column, I want to split anything which has a hyphen sign in between. So for example, I want the theft plane in one column and the crime itself on the second column. So again, select this column, go to transform and within this you will find this split. When you click on this split column, it will show you multiple options. Now, because we already have a delimiter in place, which is this hyphen sign, and we want to split it based on that, I'm going to select this delimiter. But you can also split it on the basis of number of characters and also by a position. Or you can also split it by lowercase to uppercase, uppercase to lowercase, digit to non digit, non digit to digit. But in my experience and opinion, the bottom ones are rarely used. You would mostly use either delimiter or number of characters or position. So I'm going to use delimiter right now. Delimiter and the delimiter is custom here. So there are some predefined delimiters here, which is comma, colon, equal sign and etc. But because we are using a hyphen, this is a custom. And in the split at section, there are again few options. The first option says leftmost delimiter. So whatever it finds from the left hand side first, it will split it and stop it at there or rightmost delimiter. From right, it will start counting wherever it found that hyphen sign, it will separate it and then stop the delimiting or you can do each occurrence of the delimiter. For now, what are we going to do is we're going to choose this rightmost delimiter. Rest of the options you can keep as it is, don't change anything. And then finally, click on OK. Now, if you see, it has converted that one column into two columns and it has splitted the hyphen sign checking from the right hand side. Now, you must notice that the column which has been splitted has a space before the actual word. This is because when we split it, we split it on the basis of hyphen. But after the hyphen, there was a space, right? And we would want to remove that. So this is the next transformation step. You select the column and you apply trim function. So what trim does is wherever it finds unnecessary spaces, it will remove it. So I'm going to select this column. Again, in the transform, go to format and click on this trim. And if you see, it has now removed that leading space, which was there for each of the values in this column. All right, moving on. Now, opposite to splitting a column, there's also merging columns. So you can club two columns together. Again, let's see that with an example. So let's take these two columns again as an example here. So I'm going to select these two columns 
And at the top, you'll see this Merge Column button in the Transform tab. Click on that. Now it's asking for a separator. Obviously, this separator is needed because if you don't provide a separator, then it will club everything together and you would not be able to identify which came from the first column and which came from the second column. So I'm going to choose, let's say, a colon because the earlier delimiter was a hyphen. Now I'm choosing a colon and it will create a new column. So you can choose any name you want. So CRM merged and press OK. And now if you see, it has created that new column merging both of these earlier columns together. Then finally, you can also reorder your columns because let's say you have this CRM CD1, CRM CD2, 3 and 4 column here, but you also have a CRM CD column here. You want all of these columns to be together. So in order for you to reorder these, just click on the column you want to reorder and just drag it like this and then drop it wherever you want. So I want it just before the CRM CD1. So I place it there. And if you see at the right hand side, it has added that new step, which is the reordered column. And if I open up this formula bar, it will show you the exact order as well. So the good thing here is if you want, you can change the order using this formula bar as well now. So instead of dragging that column manually from here, you can just change the value here and it will be changed. So let's say the CRM CD, instead of placing it here, you want it to be placed after CRM CD4. Okay. And click on this tick icon. Now, if you see the reordering has happened again and now CRM CD is at the end. So with this, I'm going to end this video for now. But stay tuned, I'm going to cover a lot more transformation techniques in my next video. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.